In this lesson, we're going to write some basic form validation code. So what we should do first is open validate.html and validate.js, which you'll find in the API forms folder. Now the HTML, which you see on this page, is created using this code here. And it's a basic user registration form. It has an email address, and it has two passwords and also a submit button. Now we're going to validate this data using JavaScript. So if you switch to validate.js, you'll see I've defined variables for the form itself and the three input boxes. Now I've done this in a single object rather than four variables, but it's really up to you. So the first thing we need to define is our event listener. And this will be done when the form's submitted. So we require our form node, which is form register defined here. And we'll add an event listener. And the event will be submit. And we'll run a function called check form. Now remember, this event will be called when the form is submitted. But if we're using a browser which understands HTML5 form controls, it won't be called until the data is actually valid. But let's also consider Internet Explorer. It will happily run this submit event handler because it's not doing any validation in the browser itself. So what I'm going to do is write a function which validates the email address, even though the browser might have done that as well. So first, let's write an email regular expression function. Now this will be the same we saw in a previous lesson, and I'm not even going to explain how it works because life's too short. So I'm going to copy and paste the code in. And now let's write our check form function. And we'll name our event object E. Now first I'm going to define an empty string variable which will hold error messages. Next I'm going to test the email address. Now we will do this in all browsers, even though an invalid address can never occur in those browsers which support HTML5 form validation. And we'll use a standard regular expression test. And what we'll do is fetch the form email, which is defined here, and extract its value. And that's the value that the user has entered into the box. So if this test fails and an email is invalid, we'll change the output message to your email address. We'll now check the passwords. Now what we need to do is check that first of all they're the same and also that the first or the second aren't empty. So let's check form class one value equals nothing or form class one value does not equal form class two value. So if nothing's been entered in class one or it doesn't match pass two. We'll add another string to our message. We can now finish our function by outputting an error message, or in this case, we're going to also output a success. So if our message isn't empty, an error must have occurred. So we'll just complete the message. Else, if our error string is empty, we know the form is valid. So let's output that message. Now what I'm also going to do is prevent the default. So this will happen regardless. The form will not be submitted whether the data is valid or not. Now normally we would only do this if an error occurred but this isn't a real system, so we'll always stop the submit. So our code's now complete. So just to recap, 
we have an event handler set here which checks the form when it's submitted. The function checks the email is correct, checks the passwords aren't empty and match each other, displays a message, and prevents the default. So let's save and run that in Firefox. So if I hit register without entering anything, you'll see that the browser stops me going any further. And at this point, our check form function hasn't run. So I can hit register again, and you can see it's still demanding the password because required was on both these fields. If I put A in that field and B in that one and hit register, you can see that it tells me to check my passwords. So let's put A in both fields. And you can see the form is valid and under normal circumstances, it would submit. Let's try the same form in Internet Explorer 9. Now Internet Explorer 9 doesn't support HTML5 forms. So if I hit register, you can see that our function actually runs. So it asks us to check our email address and the passwords. Again, if I just get one of the passwords different, it'll just tell me to check the passwords. And if they're both the same, everything is fine. So the thing to remember is that this check form function is always being run by Internet Explorer 9 when a submit occurs, but it won't be run by Firefox, Chrome, Opera and Safari until the data is actually valid. So that all works fine. So let's write some code that does something a bit more interesting. For example, let's check the email field when it's changed. So we need another form email, which is our node for the input box. We'll add an event listener. And we'll say it's a change event. Now remember this will occur when the data is changed in the field and the user focuses to somewhere else on the page. Now I'm going to write an inline function here. So in other words, I'm not creating a new function. It's a completely anonymous one. And all that function is going to do is if e target, which will always be our email field, and it will check the value equals nothing, we'll do an alert. So let's run that. Again, this is Internet Explorer 9. As we change the field, you forgot the email. Remember, only show it once, because unless we change the field, the change event won't occur. OK, so that was relatively easy. So let's introduce another rule. Now let's say we don't want the user to enter space characters in the password. Now obviously we could check for spaces in our check form function. But it would be nicer if we simply disabled the space key from working in the password fields. So what we need to do is detect a key press event on pass1 and pass2 fields. The event is key press. And we'll call a function called no spaces. And similarly, we'll do that for the pass2 field. So we can now write our no spaces function. So here, we'll check the character code property, and this returns 32 if it's a space. So what we can then do is prevent the default so that space character doesn't get into the field. So let's save that and refresh our page. So in our password, I can type any characters, but as soon as I press space, which you can't obviously see, nothing happens. And the same in box two. Doesn't matter how many times I press space, it won't ever appear in that field. So that's the basis of JavaScript form validation. Now, admittedly, HTML5 browsers make it into a dying art, 
but you'll always need custom validation code to cope with unusual situations.